Welcome to our podcast today. We're thrilled to introduce an extraordinary guest, someone that I've been looking up to for many, many years. He's not just any speaker. He's a New York Times bestselling author who has sold 37 million books. He's recognized as the top leader in a business by the American Management Association and known as the most influential leadership expert by Business Insider and Inc. Magazine. He's also been honored with the Mother Teresa Prize for Global Peace, the number one leader in my book, Dr. John C. Maxwell. Albert, it is a pleasure, my friend, to be Thank with you. you. Thank you. I've been looking forward to our time together. I just want you to know how proud I am of you. When I think of, of uh, what you came through to be what you are today, you know, Booker T. Washington said one time, the success is not where you have arrived. Success is what you had to go through. Wow. To get there. And whenever I think of somebody successful, I think of Albert. I, I think of him and how he's overcome challenge and obstacle and barriers throughout his life to, to get where he is. And, and then what happens is when I find somebody like you, Albert, I greatly respect you. Thank you. Because you're not giving theory. You're, 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 you're talking about principles that have helped you in your life to be very successful. That's right. Of which, if they helped you, they can help all the people that are a part of your team. So great to be with you. And Thank you. Great to be with all of you today. Glad you're here with us on the podcast. John, like they say, success leaves clues. Yeah. Right? And you left many for me through your books, through your speaking engagements, through just everything that you've done in a world of leadership. And I want to say thank you for thank you. You know, helping me become the person I am. Thank you very much. I want to start this podcast on a high note and ask you a question that I believe has a lot of volume to it. You said those that know me the best love me and respect me the most. Can you unpack that for me? Yeah, I certainly can. When I was in my middle 30s, Albert, yeah. I was becoming quite successful. Books mm -hmm. were selling. I was the, in the first group that was, was in, in, inducted into the Amazon Hall of Fame for writers. And uh, life was really good. Yeah. But I was watching a lot of people that I knew, and they were very successful, but their life wasn't together. Their family was messed up. Uh, some of them were spending too much money and, and, and they just, success that they had was very uh, rocky. And, and, mm. and, and, and I, I looked at them and I thought, I, I had better get a personal definition of success. I, be, I better have a definition that John Maxwell can embrace. Wow. You know, because success is very subjective. For one person, it may mean entirely different than someone else. Absolutely. So I spent about six months asking myself, okay, what is success? Is success making money? Is it, you know, being a, a, a bestseller uh, in books? Is I had started several companies by this time. Is it starting companies? And I came to the conclusion for me, this is my personal definition of success, that uh, those who are closest to me, right. who really know me the best, right. they love and respect me the most. Because, you know, those who know you the best, right. they not only know what I'm good at, they know my bad habits, they, yes. they've seen me on bad days, yep. you know. So, but yet they still love and respect me because I'm the real deal, you know. And so that's been a great definition for me. In fact, I tell people all the time, Albert, if people who don't know you well like you better than people who do know you well, wow. you got problems. You've so, got real problems. I want to kind of touch up on that because I think it's important. A lot of times in leadership world, leaders who are young, they try to put this facade that they're yes. perfect. Yes. How yeah. important is it to be human, to be transparent, to it's show essential. that you can bleed? It's essential, Albert. It's essential. I, this fake it to you, make it crap is crap. Right. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, let me tell you, if, if, if you fake it till you can make it, Number one is you can't make it, and the people around you can't take it. Wow. After a while, they look at you and say, I, I can't have See, I don't think people want a perfect leader. I do think they want an authentic leader. The genuine one. Uh, real genuine, real, yeah. real. That's why I don't care for politicians. I mean, wow. when's the last time you heard a politician look at the camera and say, it was my fault. Right. I'm the problem. Right. It's been decades right. before I've... I mean, they just blabber all kind of stuff. It, because as leaders... We're not perfect. And there are times when I don't make a good decision. Yes. Well, if I'm authentic, I let my people know so that we can correct it and get better. 
And if I'm a fake it till you make it, then I'm trying to fool everybody. How long can you fool people till one day they say I've been fooled? Right. And now they're off the boat and you've lost your integrity with them. So I think, I think uh, our humanity, our authenticity is, is essential to our leadership. And so that definition keeps me real. I mean, so somebody reads my book and says, he must be amazing. Or somebody hears me speak and says, he must be amazing. <laughs> well, go talk to my family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go home. You know, yeah. you, you know, somebody asked me one time, now what do you do when you go home? I don't know. What do they think I do? Sit the family down and entertain them and talk to them and give them philosophy. And No, no. I take out the garbage. You know, I go That's home right. And, That's right. And, and, and do the stuff that you do as a father. Or the stuff to listen to husband. our wives. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yes. That, see, Albert, you're a wise. I knew I liked you. Oh, man. In 1974, you had a realization. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Yeah. What does that mean? It means everything rises and falls on leadership. Uh, that statement is what uh, started me in the leadership world. Yeah. Because I said, if that is true, if it's really true, everything rises and falls on leadership. If I could teach people how to lead well, look what I would do for them, regardless of what their business is, yeah. regardless of what their career is going to be. Look, look how I could help people. And so I believe that, but yeah, 1974, think about it. 50 years later, I believe that more than I believed 50 years before. Wow. Not many people give, give their life to something that the longer they give it to, the more yeah, convinced it. yeah. it's true. Yeah. But I, I've, been, I've been very fortunate. And, and today I know that for a fact. And that's true in government. That's true in education. That's true in business. That's true in, in religion. That's true in every facet of culture. Right. And I know that because, you know, I have uh, the largest training company in the world. We've trained six million leaders in every country in the world. I have the largest coaching company in the world. Uh, and so we're, we travel, we travel, in fact, I'll leave this week internationally again. So we're out there. And regardless of country, regardless of culture, regardless yeah. of custom, everything rises and falls on leadership. So, Albert, if I can help people really lead well, uh, then I'm going to really be successful with them. And, and there are two things that I have discovered in mm -hmm. my 50 years <laughs> that, that I can say, if you do these two things, your leadership will rise. And if you don't do these two things, your leadership will fall. Wow. And the two things are, you have to develop good leadership skills. In other words, you have to have the skills of a leader to lead well. And the second thing is you have to have good values. And, and one doesn't substitute for the other. It's possible to have great leadership skills but have bad values. And we see it all the time. That's when leaders manipulate people right. and move them for personal uh, and And so you, you, if you have good skills but you have bad values, then you won't lead people well. You'll manipulate them and you'll lead them for your personal advantage. Me versus we. Yeah, yeah. And, and we don't want that, Albert. Right. And, and I've also known people who had great values but they didn't know how to lead. Wow. So I, tell, I say, if you've got somebody that's a friend that has great values, but they're not a good leader, don't follow them somewhere. Just go to lunch with them. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Uh, but, but, you, but when you have both of them, good, good values, good leadership skills, then you, you, can, uh, you can lead well. And what's beautiful, Albert, is every person, every, every one of you, every person can learn how to lead. Hmm. I wrote a book called Developing the Leader Within You. That book was the Breakthrough book in leadership. Up and I, I wrote that 30, 30 years ago. Up until that book was written, people thought that leaders were born. Yes. They thought, well, you either are born a leader, so you go to the front of the line, or you're born a follower, or you go to the back of the line. Yeah. And in that book, I said, no, that's not true. You, you can develop leadership skills. And from that time on, I've proven that by equipping millions and millions of leaders around the world. So uh, leadership can be taught. And we're committed to teaching it. But, but if you learn those skills, you still have to have good values. It's not either or, it's both ends. As a leader, what's more important, having a soft skill or a hard skill? Well, it's kind of like swimming, which harms the best, the left or the right. You've got to have both. Uh, I, I think that we are, uh, we're coming into a time where soft skills are beginning to take preeminence over hard skills. Okay. And, and, and the reason for that is in, uh, since COVID and the high 
uh, fragileness of emotions of people and the dysfunction of people. Soft skills are becoming very essential to getting people to follow. Uh, there's a little bit more intimidation and fear that people have. So I, I, don't, I think they're both essential. I think you have to have both. But uh, I've known hard skill leaders who led with, uh, with integrity, good leaders, but the people never felt close to them. And, and so I, I think that if they don't feel close to you and you're not a good soft skill leader, I think, I think you leave some goodwill on the table. Mm. Whereas if you can do soft skills and hard skills, I think you have best, the best of both worlds. John, you once said that no matter how gifted you are, no matter how committed you are, if you're out of position, you're not going to be successful. How does one know if they're out of position, and what does that mean to be out of position? Well, it's a great question. Uh, well, let's put it this way. We're doing leadership. This is a podcast. Yeah. Albert and John, friends, helping to do <laughs> leadership. There's one person on this podcast that right now would be listening or watching us and saying, man, I hope John sings a song today. Right. There, there's not one person there, there, there <laughs> hasn't entered their mind right. that they want me to sing. And the reason they don't want me to sing is I'm not any good at it. Right. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a strength of mine. It's a weakness of <laughs> yeah. mine. And, and when, when I talk about being out of position, here's John Maxwell's out of position when instead of teaching leadership, he says, now let me talk to you about the song I just wrote. Mm. Oh, everybody's going, well, wait, wait, I wrote a song? Yeah. I had no clue. I, I've been reading his leadership books. So... You have to stay in your strength zone, what Love you're it. naturally good at, to uh, stay in position. And I tell people constantly in skill sets, you need to work on strengths, not on weaknesses. Okay. Because you only go, you're only going to jump two numbers. So from a one to a ton, let's say that I'm very weak. And I'm a, like a, I'm a three out mm -hmm. of ten. I'm weak. So I say, oh, I'm going to work on that weakness. Well, all I'm going to do is take myself, if I work hard, from a three to a five, and that's average. And there's not one person out there that wants to pay for average. Right, right, right. So, so if I work on my weaknesses, I, I never get strong. But if I work on my strengths, I get stronger. If, it, if I'm a six or a seven, mm. okay, I'm already above average. If I work it, I could be an eight. Right. Now you get an eight or a nine, you're in the top 10%. You're now, now all of a sudden, you're going to have a return for what you're doing. Can somebody max out their strength? Where they're capped, no. and now they have to focus no. on them. No. Oh. no. There, there's no such thing as max out. When, when people tell me they're, you know, sometimes they'll say, well, I'm giving 105%. I say, well, 100% probably not. The last 5% is delusional. Mm. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, really, I don't think we ever reach our potential. I, I, I've been on a personal growth plan for 55 years. And I, I, I've, I'm not, I've, I've not arrived yet. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not like an expert yet. I, you see, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Wow. And the more you know you don't know, the more you know you need to know what you don't know. And so you're, you, you're, you're not like, oh my gosh, I got it. You, you're, no, I don't got it. I'm trying to get it, but I don't have it, and, and I never will have it. I, I don't even think... I think for the most successful people, there's not even a finish line. I'm 76. I, I don't think I have a finish line. It's not I like, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, uh, I'll cross this and I'm finished. You know, I, in fact, I tell people if they have a finish line, it, it's, first of all, it's self-imposed, nobody else. But if you have a finish line and you cross it, you're finished. Hmm. Now, what, what's exciting about that, that, you know, Game You've got over. years to live and yeah. nothing to give because you're already tapped out. That kind of sounds like a pretty lonely life to me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. When you first started, you said your strategy was hard work and hope, and you quickly realized working hard doesn't guarantee success, and hope isn't a strategy. Yeah. So how did you replace those, and what did you replace them with? Well, that's a great question. Well, first of all, <coughs> Don't work hard, work smart. Okay. And the way you work smart is to ask questions. Love it. And the way that you do is you go find people bigger, better, faster, smarter than you. And you ask them questions. And you sit at their feet with humility and you learn from them. So I owe so much of my life, Albert, to mentors that have poured into me. 
I have invested in me millions and millions and millions of dollars. Invested in me. I, you know, okay, I need to I need to buy that personal growth plan so I can learn and grow that. And oh I need to I need to I need to have that I need to pay that person to mentor me for a period of time or I need this person to mentor my team. And and um I asking when I was a young leader like you, I, I I gave direction. I was very clear about what I wanted to accomplish. So I didn't lack vision. I didn't lack clarity. It's kind of like let's go charge that mountain. Mm-hmm. But I, I I gave direction, and and I never stopped to ask the people that were on my team. I never found out where they were. I, I you know, you, you really need to find people before you can lead them. Wow. And, and I just kind of let them, and and so there are some of them. They didn't follow well because I, I didn't know why they should even be on the team or maybe they shouldn't be on the team. So I started asking questions. I wrote a book. Oh, my gosh. This has been such a helpful book to leaders. It's called Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. I promise you. More leaders have come to me and said that book changed my life. It taught me how to ask, ask questions about myself, ask questions about right. my team, ask questions about the clients, mm-hmm. the people that are, I, we're trying to serve. Just ask questions. Find out. Find them and then lead them. And, and, and so uh, work, that's working smart. And even to this day, uh, I'm constantly investing money in people to teach me. I, you know, I... I have I've had I've had learning lunches for 40 years which means every month I take somebody like you to lunch okay and and I buy your lunch <laughs> and I've got seven questions to ask you and while while I ask questions you eat I I listen to you and you teach me wow and I've done that for 40 years well you know I've done that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and it's been life changing to me. And, and but, but you know, if if you're the head of the class, you're the wrong class. Right, I agree. You, you got to get around people bigger, better, faster, smarter. So I take them out, ask questions. I, I mean, I promise you, if, Albert, if you had, and I could have an hour, and I could ask you these questions, you would teach me so much. I would I would learn from you things that will help me be a better person, a better leader. So so hope's not a strategy. And, and, and so you, you you replace hard work with smart work, and you and you replace hope with facts. In, in other words, the more I know, the more I don't have to hope. Hmm. I just know. I've learned that. It, I've practiced that. It works. So now I'm building my life not off of hype and hope. I'm building my life on the, on success. Things yes. that I know work, not because I hope they work. They're proven. They're proven. I mean, it's like you. If somebody says, do you think I can be successful, Albert, if I've got a lot of adversity in my life? You can look around and say, listen listen to me. My Mm -hmm. name's Albert. I'm your friend. Yeah. Of course you can. Right. Let let me tell you what I went through. Right. And look where I am. Now, you have the conviction and the passion of a leader, not because you have hope. No. Because you have found that this works, that this is true. Yeah. And that's what people need. People need people need to, to know what works and why it works that way and how they can do it. And uh, once you do that for people, well, that's what you're doing. That's why you're so successful. Once you do that for people, it, it makes a big difference. For me, the big one was replacing hope with faith. Yeah, that's beautiful. Knowing that I'm already there. Knowing that I can be there. Yeah. You know, believing in the possibilities of yeah. getting through all these challenges. Yeah, there's a lot of difference between the question, can I, and how can I? Yeah, yeah. You see, when you, can I, you you still have a question mark. When you say, how can I, you don't have a question mark. You, now you just got to figure out how you're going to do it. Right. But you've already, it's going to be done. Right. It, you, it's already settled. I will accomplish this. Now, how am I going to accomplish it? That's a lot different than can I. It creates intention. It creates intention. You're yeah. so right, out. Yeah, yeah. Totally. While we're on the topic of teaching, you know, I once read from you, and this helped me tremendously to extract the most possible results from people. You said there's a difference between coaching, telling, and teaching. Yeah. Right? You have to know when to coach somebody, when to teach somebody, and when to tell somebody. Could you touch upon that a little bit? Well, I think the ultimate is coaching. 
because it, it's teaching, but it's also practice. Mm. Uh, you know, when, when you're teaching somebody, you're giving out information, but that information will only carry a person so far. Mm -hmm. So far, when you're coaching a person, you're giving information out but then you're practicing to validate it. Right. And it's, in the, it's, it's not in the head knowledge that we become great leaders. It's in the practice. Right. And uh, you know, it's, it's not tell me what you're going to do, show me what you're going to do. Right. Coaching's got the tell me, but it's got the, the show me, which takes, I think, mentoring to a whole new level. So all of my good mentors have walked into my life and they've given me great insight. But with that insight, they said, now let's take action. Let's, right. let's you know. Before we talk again, you go practice this. Yeah, yeah. Come back and tell me how it works. They and say, that, that's life-changing. They say the best presentation is demonstration. Best demonstration. Yeah, pre presentation, demonstration. That's yeah. exactly right. You have to flesh it out. Right. Right on. Perfect. How have moments of self-awareness and reflection contribute to your personal and professional growth? I'm always amused when people talk about self-awareness. In fact, I, I, I wrote a book called, and it's been very successful, yeah. called The Self-Aware Leader. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I would say that there's no such thing as a self-aware leader. There is. I, I, when somebody says, well, I'm very self-aware, I, I look at them and say, now nah, you're delusional. <laughs> here's, here's what I mean by that. I'm not self-aware. I have blind spots. I, ha I have things, Albert, in my life mm. I just don't see. Right. Not because I don't want to see them. I'm not being rebellious. It's the fact that it's not in my experience. I've never, I mean, if, if, if we started talking about overcoming adversity, your awareness of how to do that would be much greater than mine because of the experience of being in another country and all, yeah. the, all the negative things that were stacked against you. So I have blind spots. You have, we all have blind spots. Yes. And somebody said, well, if it's a blind spot, can you see anything? I said, no, it's a blind spot. So how do I see what I can't see? The only way I can see it is for you as a friend, Albert, to walk to my life and say, John, let me just say something. I've watched you lead, and you really have no understanding of what people are thinking. You lead by assumption. Oh, I do. I didn't know that. Now, you began to make me aware of a blind spot. Mm. If I'm teachable, if I'm a humble person, I'm going to take that and I'm going to say, okay, I've got to work on this. And now I'm aware that it's a blind spot. doesn't mean I'm good at it. It just means I'm aware. But awareness is the key to personal growth. You, you cannot improve your life if you're unaware of something. You have to know yourself to grow yourself. Yes. And if I don't know me, how can I grow me? So when you make me aware of it, now I'm beginning to ask questions in my weak areas until I begin to uh, discover and, right. and see. And after a while, I am self-aware. But I'm only self-aware because you made me aware. I wasn't self-aware on my own. I and I think that's, I think that's why uh, you know, perspective is you know, how we view things is how we do things. Mm. And, and we all view things a certain way, and so we do them that way. And sometimes we think that's the only way, but that's not true. So I think, I think one of the best things we can do in my mentoring, I do a lot of mentoring for companies. I do a lot of mentoring. In fact, I'll be in the studio doing mentoring for companies all day. I do mentoring for people, individuals. And probably the greatest gift I give them is uh, awareness. I, I, I really help them. And all of a sudden I say, okay, I, let's, let's work on this a little bit. And, and we start working on it. And then they started, they started improving on it. So I think it's, I know for me, when people talk about my wisdom, of course, I'm older and I've been doing this a long time. My wisdom is basically other people's wisdom. Wow. That they have spoken into my life and I've sat at their feet and I've not only taken notes, but I've practiced what they've said and I've learned and I've improved. And then one day I can teach it. And so I'm, I'm, I have no idea. I have, honestly, the biggest mystery to me in, in success is people who don't have mentors. Wow. I, I, I look at them and I say, really? I didn't have any understanding that you were that great. That, yeah. you, that, that you didn't need men and women walking in your life 
that you know I, I mean I see people every day that they know what I don't know they've been where I've not been some of them have done what I've never done I got to get to those people right right because you know I, I'm not going to get there on my own I got to get I got to get somebody to say yeah I'll take care of you I, I remember when I was very young and 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 I had a mentor say I needed to have a personal growth plan and I didn't have one. I didn't even know I was supposed to have one. Honestly, Albert, it never entered my mind to have a personal growth plan. I just worked hard. Right. But he said, "No, you you got to get you got to you got to have a plan. You you can't grow by accident." His statement was, "It's it, <laughs> you, you you automatically grow older, but you don't automatically grow get better." Wow. Yeah. And it was true. And so I, I I found a growth plan. It took me about six months, and I didn't. Margaret and I we didn't have any money. We had no credit cards. It was seven hundred ninety nine dollars, and that was like a month's salary back then in my life. So we saved up six months for that seven hundred ninety nine dollars, and we finally got the money, and I bought the kit, and it changed my life. It changed my life. It was it was a kit on goal setting, how to set goals, how to process your life. I for two years, every day. Listened, wrote, practiced uh, the, what the kid said. Changed my life. And in fact, if you go to my home office, I have that kid in my office. Wow. And I look at it every day when I'm there, and, and I look at it and say, that 799 investment has returned millions of dollars to me. Right. And so I tell people the first person you should invest in is yourself, not because you're selfish. But you cannot give what you do not have. Can't pour out of empty cup. Yeah, I can't. And so I got to fill my cup. You're so right, Albert. Before before I can give it, I, if I if I got an empty cup, who 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 stands in line for an empty cup? You get, my, my father said it another way. He said, "Keep the well full. Oh. Keep water in the well, son. Keep you got you got to always have water in the well." So, when it comes to you know when people talk about success, I very quickly want to say to them and to you and everybody. You've got to be, you've got to be mentoring yourself, getting mentored by somebody. You've got to be getting your team mentored. I, I'm always exposing my team to mentorship of other people, bigger and better people, and and we all grow because of it. That's you said sure. it. One is too small of a number to achieve greatness. One's too, yeah. But guys, Albert, <laughs> Albert knows my stuff, man. I, you know what? If I get a little tired here and I have to drop out of this Q&A, don't worry, Albert will answer those questions. <laughs> oh, my God. He, just, just, he'll just say, my name is John, and he'll just take off. My Fact, name is John, and I'm your friend. <laughs> that's it. You got that. You got that wire, buddy. You uh, got that wire. As a leader, how do you believe navigating through challenging experiences to, uh, contribute to your development and effectiveness? Well, we always do better in difficult experiences than in easy ones, you know. Easy makes us lazy. I, I tell people all the time, don't chase easy. Mm. People yeah. usually look for convenience, oh, yeah. comfortability, oh, yeah. easiness. The, the, I have a definition of a shortcut. It's the, it's the longest distance between two points. Wow. And I watch people take shortcuts all the time, and then they're all screwed up, and they oh. have to back up. And you know, it, it, it Just don't chase easy. Everything worthwhile, as you said earlier, that I teach is, is uphill. And so, you know, embrace failure, embrace adversity. You know, Bill Gates said success is a lousy teacher. It makes people think they can't lose. Mm. He's so right. But the moment you have some misses and losses, it, it helps us. It, 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 it then, I mean, in your adversity, you learn resiliency. Yeah. Now, the confidence you have on the back end was, was because you did the, the, the hard things on the front end. And so when somebody says, oh, we've got a, a problem, you look at it and you really want to say, you don't even know what a problem is. Right. Good right. Lord. This is so easy compared to what I used to have to do. Well, you develop character. You develop strength. You, mm. you, you develop confidence, all those things that come in. And, and that's, that's good for all of us. Yeah. In my opinion, I think <coughs> being delusional <coughs> and having dress is the discipline through going through pain. You know, you could be delusional and once something happens, you quit. But if you're disciplined yeah. through the pain, you will get to your dreams. Uh, so, uh, my father used to say, pay now, play later. Ah, I love it. Pay now, play I later. And he said, the longer you wait to pay, the higher the price. So get in. Get in the game, son. Yeah. Pay now. Well, I pay because, every day. Because if you pay now, the play compounds. But if you play now, the pay compounds. Wow. 
So just That's powerful. figure it out. A lot of leaders that I work with, they're young. They make mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes because nobody's perfect. But then they stay holding on to that mistake. Yeah. And they lose their confidence. Yeah. They have a bad self-conception. They believe they can't be a better leader than they were yesterday. How does one change it up? I wrote a book. It's not out yet. It's finished. Wow. I wrote a book uh, called How to Receive a Return on Failure. Mm. It's very popular in the corporate community. Very, very popular. In fact, I wrote the book because the lecture was so popular, so I think I'll write a book on it. So it's done, but I haven't. I haven't given it to the publisher because I want all of a sudden I wanted to write another book that timing was important. Uh, and so I put this one aside and there's a book I'm, that's coming out in March or April, probably April called uh, High Road Leadership. High Road Leadership. Uh, with the subtitle Leading uh, or Bringing People Together in a World That Divides. Wow. Because our culture is full of divided people because of all the lousy politicians we yes. have who care much more about them winning an election than what's best for the people. Mm. So it's about time somebody looks at all of them and calls them for what they are, total frauds. Their, their responsibility is to lead for the benefit of the people, not the benefit of the party. Yeah. And, 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 and so, but they don't. And because of it, we, we, we in America are suffering very greatly right now. So in that book, I give eight or 12, 12 distinctives of what a high road leader looks like because we got a young generation, they don't even have a clue what a good leader looks like. They've been watching Fiddle D and Fiddle Dum on TV for too long. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna to try to help bring clarity back to it. So I tabled the Return on Failure book for this one because of the election coming up and the timing. But uh, on how to receive a return on failure, let me just give you one thing as we wrap this up today. Um, I tell people that they have to put failure and success together. Okay. and not separate them. People want to separate them. Our culture says, succeed, don't fail. And they yeah. put them as far, oh, oh my, don't, don't do right. this. It's like a or, 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 or they say, do it right, don't do it wrong. And, 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 and th you can't separate success and failure because that's not true with life. Hmm. I, I don't have days where, my gosh, I've had a week and I've not had any failure at all. I've just succeeded. And then I had three days of all failure. No, no, they always... Every day I have some wins. Every day I have some losses. Yes. Here's why you have to keep them together. Because when they're together, they add value to each other. Failure together with success makes success much better than if it was alone. And success with failure makes failure much more palatable if it's not alone. So when I keep them together, when I succeed, but I've got failure right beside me, I'm very cognizant of my losses, even while I'm succeeding, it teaches me humility. Wow. And it keeps me learning. When I'm failing, if I keep success right beside my failure, it teaches me resiliency. It says, okay, you're in the ditch today, but success says you can get out. When you put them together, they add meaning to each other and purpose to each other, and it really works. Wow. The moment you separate them, it doesn't work. So I tell people all the time, make, 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 make success and failure your best friends. Embrace them both. They both have two different agendas. They teach you two different things, but you have to have both to succeed. Right. So that's what I say about success and failure. Wow. The book is a great book. It'll come out yeah. another year. Sorry about that. <laughs> but get, hey, get high road leadership in the meantime. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. You have two more books in planning to come out. I can't wait to read them. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank you. Last question for you, and we're going to wrap this up. You've been in so many different stages. You have done so many speaking engagements, books. You wrote over 100 books. Um, what is one question that you wish someone asked you that no one did? Well, the one question I wish people would ask me, and they have before. It's not that they haven't. I just wish they would ask it more. I, I wish that they would ask me about my faith. Because honestly, uh, I have a relationship with God, mm. and that faith has uh, solidified, uh, that solidified who I am and identified what my purpose is, and I just feel it's a terrific asset. Now, when I'm in public forums, I never do that anyway, because I don't want to be offensive to people. That's not my purpose. But 
But when when I'm one on one with people, I love for them to ask me because it's honestly it's kind of like I've been waiting on telling you the real secret, and yeah. I've never been able to tell it to you. So I, I and and I get that opportunity quite a bit. I'm very grateful for it, and if it's changed all lives. So it, that's just who I am, and faith's very important to me. I want to say thank you for doing everything that you have done for the last 50 years. Thanks, friend. For myself, for many other leaders, you are to me the father of leadership. Thank you. Well, Albert, thank you. And when I, you're my new young friend. Thank you. But, but when somebody says, now, do, do you know a real good leader? I will say, yeah, Albert, Albert. Have you met Albert? <laughs> now, the problem is I'm not going to say his last name because I can't remember. It's just Albert S. <laughs> That's and right. Albert S. isn't going to do it, but it's as good as I can do. But, Albert, you are a terrific leader. Thank and I, you. I really appreciate your values. I appreciate how much you care for the people you lead. And I just, it's for people like you that I do what I do. So it's very fulfilling to be with you today. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. What a great podcast. Thank you so much.